Bonjour à tous. Right, good morning. Euh, oui, effectivement, comme le yes. je vous dire, je suis... Uh, As uh, you've just heard, um, a uh, delegate for all the French uh, mutuality, and I'm also one of the administrators for the PFR Foundation, has been the case for two to three years, and I'm very proud and happy about it. And I'm also a medical doctor uh, with uh, a, a practice. And uh, when you are a medical doctor, you have to practice or you're no longer a physician. That's my point of view on that. And I'm interested in humanitarian work. I was involved in that area. Uh, I was one of the funding members of Action Contre la Faim. And I'm also interested in the work of Médecins Sans Frontières. So since my early years and in the, uh, since the beginning of my career, I've been passionate about uh, humanitarian work. And I like the title of the PFAB Foundation that, that it was decided to give to this conference what we can do to uh, manage uh, universal healthcare coverage. And if we want to get that UHC, we need funding. And if we want to help in development, we need to tackle the real topics, the topics that make it possible to change behaviors. And it's a question of funding. And therefore, I'm very happy that the PFAB Foundation helps, but also works upstream by working on the development uh, side of things. And I would like to thank uh, the director, and Mr. Revol, for tackling those topics which lie very close to my heart. In all countries, there are challenges, and we've seen that this morning. Development has to do with two fundamental points, education and health. Health requires quality care and uh, consistent quality. And we need quality diagnosis, good level of care. And of course, I'm talking about primary care and care that is provided in, in the first line. But also, the second part is a sustainable and robust economy, which will help in meeting the needs of as many as possible, because we see year in, year out, that no single individual can access basic care in developing countries, but also in, in, in developed countries. And you may remember some figures that I mentioned in the press release by the foundation. In Africa, 90% of people will meet the health expenditures by themselves. It's 45% in the world. And in France, what remains to be paid, uh, so what you need to pay out of your pocket to be uh, taken care of once the uh, state uh, insurance uh, has paid, it's only 10%. So it's really striking that in France, what you have to pay is only 10%, where, whereas in, in, in Africa, where the needs are so high, what has to be paid by the patients is as high as 90%. So we can't leave it as it's as it is and people also are become impoverished because of the cost of health care and it has and so if we want to break this circle we need to uh, tackle those issues therefore uh, each and everyone has to be in a situation to contribute to the health system but also benefit from uh, a fair health system and all one of the, the classical solutions that have been adopted in the world is solidarity and mutualization what is mutualization well the principle is that you have a private body without any uh, lucrative objective the first one were created in, in, in France in the 19th century and the objective of use of, of the mutualization is once again to mutualize our server risks. So those people choose on a voluntary basis in a private setting to pool their means and assets to face the challenges, the health challenges that they may come across. And so as I said, it started in the 19th century 
and uh, via those uh, mutualité were implemented in France before the French state insurance, the Sécurité Sociale. It was after Second World War, an idea of a high council of a resistance to um, bring together mutualité and a Sécurité Sociale. And, and, and today, that's also the situation. So solidarity and mutualization based on the same principle, the idea that everybody is going to pay according to their financial means, and they're also going to receive and benefit according to their needs. Uh, mutuality are a major player um, are major players in the French landscape. They also have a private uh, health insurance. They, they reimburse about 14% of care. The state uh, insurance re reimburses uh, um, three quarter of the costs. But in the southwest of France, we have uh, many uh, uh, mutualized uh, insurances. Uh, and historically, they've been very strong in the southwest of France. And they also have a role to play in that they complement the money the money that is reimbursed by the state and or the private um, uh, insurance. And uh, those mutualities have also created uh, optical centers and uh, uh, first line treatment centers. And also in the 19th century, they also created baths, public baths, because people didn't have bathrooms in their house in those days. So you really find this, this uh, mutualized um, baths and mutualized bakeries as well. Uh, you have to. You, you should know that those were also means that were implemented by those mutualities. So, the fundamental um, principle also has to do with democracy, because each member uh, choose how they want to, um, to to contribute. So that's democracy and freedom that are the funding principles, and it really helps in accessing the support in case of need, and that's the reality as of to. Day. The fact that uh, there's a mutualized uh, insurance, there's mutuality, the uh, rate of participation to our election is higher than the turnout rate for presidential election or European elections. So basically, there is a strong involvement and the different members and the governance bodies are elected. So they really create a connection and social linkage as well. So those mutuality do belong to the social fabric, as it were, in, in, in the French society. And we also support the development of such schemes in Africa, notably. There are strong historical links between uh, French mutualities and African mutualities, especially in French-speaking uh, Africa, and you do understand why. And there's also support to development with uh, um, the values being showcased. So uh, supporting uh, the members, but also supporting others. So why do we want to develop mutuality in developing countries, especially in Africa? Because we think it's the right answer to this question of public health and social protection. So there are private insurances and uh, they also do the share. But we do see that in developing countries, private insurances uh, are mostly addressing senior uh, managers, uh, maybe 5% of the population, the most wealthy part of the population. And we realize that 95% of the population is still not covered. And I'm not going to give you a lecture. I know you know that. Uh, there is a coverage for the, 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 the have, and there's no coverage for the have-nots. And we need to bridge that gap. And the main target of the mutualities in uh, Africa is really uh, those people with less financial means. So we are organizations that also work in the field close to the people. Once again, you have to think globally, but act locally. And those mutuality in France, but also in Africa, is also an answer to real life. 
if uh, we manage to get universal health care coverage, I think that this uh, um, mutuality will help with that. Uh, I know that uh, um, time is of the essence and that uh, the uh, lunch break is coming soon. But before concluding, I would like to give you an overview on an initiative that was started three years ago. We created a support scheme and so we financed a body which is providing um, advice and expertise to decision makers in uh, the uh, Western Africa, uh, UNMA, uh, Burkina Faso, Niger, Togo, to name but a few of the members to this organization. And so they benefit from this expertise for those cat sales and at the uh, national and regional level. So we're here to finance this expertise, this consultancy, and uh, to really uh, support the decision making and inform the decision making. This is something that is provided to the decision makers because we want this mutuality, this mutuality to continue and, and, and develop and therefore this is our responsibility that those mutuality keep developing in Africa. So uh, this is uh, the PAM program, the support program for mutuality based in the Ivory Coast. So it's a training in, in strategy how you can implement uh, universal healthcare uh, coverage and also how you can uh, train uh, to this uh, mutual mu mutualization. Uh, so that was in a few words what I wanted to, to say. I would like to thank Pierre Yves and Patricia to give me the floor. Unfortunately, I won't be here this afternoon because I have many things to do and you understood that I still have a, a practice. So it's quite unfortunate that I, I can't be here this afternoon because this morning we talked about the offer and this is fundamental. It's important to see how the offer adapts to, to the needs and it's very important also to talk about how we fi finance that. And during the second uh, round table, we'll see how we act and how we address those needs. So we don't want to impose anything. We do not want to impose our model. We need to adapt to the reality of the field. We need to adapt to the wishes of the uh, players. And the different associations and the different organizations will certainly ask for our expertise. We're here to help them but we want to uh, remain true to our uh, to our values the value of democracy of, of, of freedom and so we, we're here to support the african mutuality so that was really what i wanted to say to conclude this debate